Okay, before we try to tackle a more complicated uh, problem of curve sketching, we want to clarify something from the last video, and that's this. We were talking about graphing the function y equals x cubed, which looks roughly like this. Its first derivative is 3x squared. Its second derivative is 6x. So as a critical point when x equals 0, is that a maximum point or a minimum point? Well, it's neither because the second derivative is neither positive nor negative. It's 0. And that's one class of inflection point then that we can, that we encounter when dy dx equals 0 at a certain value x1 and so does the second derivative. That is equal to 0. When evaluate it at that same point. So what happens with the curve here is it's going up and right at zero it's flat and it continues going up again. And that's typical behavior of these inflection points where the first derivative and the second derivative are both zero. Now there's a second classification of inflection points where the first derivative is not zero. The second derivative is zero. And here we have to be careful. For the second class of inflection points, this has to hold true, but by itself is not a sufficient criteria. What also has to hold true for the second class of inflection points is at the critical point or at the critical point x1 or at the potential point of inflection x1, this has to be zero, but then about the point x1, the magnitude of the second derivative has to shift sign. So at x1, that 0, just to the left of x1, it might be negative. And just to the right of x1, it shifts sign, becoming positive. Or it might be positive just to the left of x1, and that changes sign when you get to the right side of x1. You need to have this happening as well as this criteria to qualify as an inflection point of that second general class. And we'll have a problem here that will illustrate that. Also, I want to point out that besides the previous video where we handled some more basic examples of curve sketching, we do have videos that deal exclusively with the fundamental phenomenon of our turning and critical points and also inflection points. If you haven't looked at those, I think you might find them worth your while. But okay, for this video, let's take a look at this problem. Let's say we have a curve where y equals x cubed minus 6 x squared plus 9x plus 6. And we want to try and get a rough sketch of what that curve might look like. So, it doesn't feel like there's any way to get this factored out to its prime factors, even using uh, synthetic division. So, we're not going to try to determine exactly where it crosses the x-axis. Perhaps we can get an approximation once we get this sketched out. But what would do I dx be? Let's we can certainly figure that out. That will equal 3x squared minus 12x plus 9. And let's take the second derivative while we're at it. That will equal 6x minus 12. Now, let's set this equal to 0 to see if we can determine our critical points. So we have 3x squared minus 12x plus 9 equals 0. We can divide 2 by 3. We we'll have x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals 0. It looks like we can factor that pretty quickly.
So we have critical values where x equals 3. And x equals 1. Now notice x equal 2 is not a critical value because it make the first derivative 0. But it does make the second derivative 0. So at x equals 2 might disqualify for an inflection point. We'll examine that in just a couple of minutes. Let's take a look at these. x equals 3, x equals 1. These are turning points. Are they maximum values or minimum values? Now let's go over to here. x equals 3. Look at it in here. We have 18 minus 12. That's a positive value. So this is a minimum point. And for x equal 1, we have 6 minus 12 is negative 6. That makes this a maximum point. And also, let's see, when x is 0, y will be 6. So let's just write down some numbers. We won't need this anymore. x equals 0, y equals 6, x equals 1, 1 minus 6 plus 6, 1 plus 9 is 10, y equals 10 for our maximum point, um, a possible point of inflection, x equals 2, y equals 8, our minimum point, x equals 3, for a local minimum point, we should say. And once again, y comes out to equal 6. So let's see if we can do a rough graph of this. Okay, let's remind ourselves, this is maximum, and this is a local minimum. And this may or may not be an inflection point. So let's see, we have the maximum value for y is 10. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is going to be a very rough graph. x is 1, 2, and 3. When x is 0, y is 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. When x is 1, y is 10. When x is 2, y is 8. And when x is 3, y is back down to 6 again. But so far, it looks like the curve is going something like this, which is the maximum. Goes down. This is a minimum, so it has to start coming up again. It's going to look something like that. Um, what about on this side? Suppose we have x negative 1, x negative 2. x equals minus 1. If we plug that in, y equals 2. And x equals negative 2. y is something like minus 44, so we have it like this, and it goes, crosses the x-axis, and continues on downward. So it crosses the x-axis somewhere between negative 1 and negative 2. So this roughly then, that would be a rough curve, or a rough diagram of what the curve would look like. Of course, this is the x-axis. This is the y-axis. What about this point here? x is 2 and y is 8. Is that an inflection point? It does make this 0. What we need to know is though, when x is 2, the second derivative is 0. What about if we're just to the left of that? Say we're at a point 2 minus a. That's our x value. 
x equals 2 of the second derivative is 0. Now we're going to consider a point just to the left of that by subtracting just a small amount of positive a away from 2, and we'll add a small amount of positive a to put us on the other side of 2. For the second derivative, we don't need to know its value here and here, but I would like to know, is it a negative value or a positive value? So this is equal to 6x minus 12, so we plug in x is 2 minus a. x is now 2 minus a, we're just left of the point that makes that 0. And that's 12 minus 6a minus 12. These cancel. a is just a small positive number, so this is negative. When x equals 2, that's 0. What about when I'm just on the other side of 2, at 2 plus a? Well, this becomes 2 plus a in here. And this will become 12 plus 6a minus 12. Those cancel. Now I have plus 6 times a small positive constant a. That becomes positive in value. So the second derivative shifts in sign about the critical point x equals 2, about the potential inflection point. Put it that way, where x is equal to 2. So that means this here is an inflection point. Now, one other thing we can say about the graph, this is what they call concave downward, and this they call concave upward. And right here at the point of inflection, that's the boundary between concave upward and concave downward. That's what that inflection point is. And so that's an example then of inflection points of the second class where the first derivative is not zero, but the second derivative is zero. And what's more, it changes value and sign about the potential inflection point. Okay, um, that's what we want to try to, to demonstrate in this video. And let's see, I don't think we have time to solve any more problems here. Come back and join us for another video, and we'll see if we can solve some more problems.